Good morning and welcome to Good Day LA at 7 o'clock. I'm Melvin Robert. And I'm Jen Lammers. Begin with breaking news this morning. California Senator Dianne Feinstein is dead at the age of 90. She was the first... She was first elected to the Senate in 1992 and was the oldest sitting U.S. Senator. Let's take a look back on her remarkable career. Trailblazer, icon, political giant, Dianne Feinstein dedicated her life to public service and broke many barriers along the way. She served 30 years in the U.S. Senate, the first woman to represent California in the upper chamber and the longest serving woman senator ever. Most of my positive energy toward this job. But her political career began decades earlier in San Francisco. The Stanford alumni was elected to the Board of Supervisors in 1969, becoming the board's first female president in 1978. That year, a shocking act of political violence. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. <laughs> Feinstein was at City Hall when the killings occurred. She found Supervisor Harvey Milk's body. George Moscone's murder at the hands of Supervisor Dan White put her in the mayor's office and sparked one of her biggest career fights, gun violence. I believe to this day if Dan White didn't have a weapon that he wouldn't have done what he did. In 1992, she was elected to the U.S. Senate and soon pushed a federal ban on assault weapons. The 1994 landmark legislation was passed and lasted 10 years. Feinstein's been advocating for its reinstatement ever since, along with other gun safety laws. If you give people the ability to easily purchase a weapon that can be devastating to large numbers of people, some of them, will use that. She was also a leading voice in legalizing gay marriage and equal rights for the LGBTQ community, authoring the Respect for Marriage Act. Americans should be free to marry the person they love, regardless of sexual orientation or race. Discrimination was not new for Feinstein. She fought as the first woman in many roles and empowered many others. After uh, my time, a majority were women. I appointed a woman city attorney, a woman treasurer. With a front row seat to history alongside other trailblazing women. But a long way we have come in this nation. Feinstein says her biggest regret was a vote to support the Iraq war. She later took on the CIA, spearheading an investigation into interrogation techniques after 9-11. Releasing this report is an important step to restore our values and show the world that we are in fact a just and lawful society. She was unafraid to speak her mind to friends and foes. Presidents are supposed to bring people together, not drive them apart. Feinstein would passionately take on what she saw as the biggest threats facing our country. Global warming is happening. Aiming to prevent and combat wildfires and deal with the effects of drought. How many times must a man look up? In February 2022, Feinstein's husband since 1980, Richard Blum, passed after a long fight with cancer. She released this statement at the time. My husband was my partner and best friend for more than 40 years. He was by my side for the good times and for the challenges. I'm going to miss him terribly. After three decades in the Senate, Feinstein announced in February 2023 she would retire, choosing not to run for re-election in 2024. Her health had been in decline, and a bout with shingles led to a more than two-month absence from the Senate. When she returned, she faced questions and concerns about her health, but insisted on focusing on the work of solving problems and passing bills. Senator Diane Feinstein leaves a legacy of service to the country and her community a towering figure of San Francisco and California politics whose life and career were both groundbreaking and historic. This is such a great country, and it's been factionalized and trivialized with rhetoric. We must stop that. We must come together as the great power that we are for the good of the nation and, I think, of mankind. Thank you for your support. Yeah, you don't want, you know, the, her recent, I guess, health issues and the criticism for her not stepping down to overshadow what a remarkable career and legacy she is leaving behind. And we have more now on the impact Senator Feinstein's passing has on Capitol Hill. Let's get out to Doug Luzader in Washington, D.C. Hey, Doug, good morning. 
Good morning. You know, leaving quite a void behind. And, you know, it's interesting to look at the arc of Senator Feinstein's career, uh, first entering, entering office in 92. Um, the year of the woman, uh, and she came in with kind of a wave of women uh, into Congress, and she got right to work. And, you know, you, you look at what she always considered kind of a signature piece of legislation that she helped usher through, and that was the assault weapons uh, ban uh, back in 94. So she w wins the seat in 92, and, and, and that piece of legislation moves in 94, that, that was quite a start for her. Uh, and then she moved on to play pivotal roles uh, in, in intelligence, in the Judiciary Committee. I mean, she has been around here for a long time. She has changed the institution. At the same time, Washington has kind of changed around her. The Democratic Party has moved to the left during her tenure. Uh, she is clearly a, a, a moderate, one of a diminishing number of moderates, really, in, in both parties. Um, but she seemed to kind of relish that role, and she was certainly criticized for it at times. And then she became kind of part of this debate about when it's appropriate to step aside. And again, I think you make a, a valid point that you don't want to diminish anything about her career by, uh, by getting into this discussion. But it, it is kind of an important facet of her career that she stuck around here for a long time. And there were questions about whether it was still suitable for her uh, to serve. Um, she has been even serving in recent days. Um, she obviously required a fair amount of assistance in, in these recent days. But it comes as we're having a larger conversation about, uh, about how old it, you know, the, the, the role of age in public service at a time when we have a lot of folks that are, that are like all of us, getting, <laughs> getting older. Um, but nevertheless, it, it does not take away from the, uh, the storied career that she has led from its very inception in, in, in the wake of tragedy in San Francisco to becoming such a huge part of the U.S. Senate. Uh, it is an enduring legacy for, Di for Dianne Feinstein here. Back yeah. to you guys. And also, Doug, to be a trailblazer and to exercise so much courage uh, being the first in so many of these rooms and in so many of these spaces. You know, I think it's always interesting when you look at the role that she played with, with intelligence committees, and we, we had talked about this, I think, last hour, that, you know, she... She helped oversee agencies like the CIA, for instance, um, and, and she could really be a fierce defender of them, which you would kind of expect, but she could also turn around and at the same time hold them to a very high standard. Um, and, and, and that may be a real mark of leadership here, you know, the, the, the ability to, uh, you know, hold your friends close but also criticize them when it was necessary. Um, and, and, and that's a role that, um, that she, she seemed to think was, 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 was necessary here in Washington to provide that kind of oversight. And that said, you know, there's, there's a hole now in the Senate in more ways than one. So what happens now? Well, you know, interesting you mentioned that. Uh, Governor Gavin Newsom just issued a statement uh, describing Feinstein as a political giant whose tenacity was matched by her grace, and it will be up to him now uh, to appoint a successor. Now, here's what we know about what he has said about this in the past, that he really intends to appoint something of a caretaker, someone who is not already announced to be running for that seat. He has also indicated that he wants to appoint a black woman uh, for that seat. So we're going to have to see what direction he intends uh, to move here at a time when the numbers are quite important here on Capitol Hill. Uh, both parties have very slim majorities, Democrats barely controlling uh, the Senate, Republicans barely controlling the House, and individual seats really matter around here. They sure do. Doug Luzader in Washington, thank you so much for thank your you insight. Doug. Thank you.